Hey everybody, Coach Dan here from The Run Experience. I'm on my way for a run and it occurred to me as I head out to the trail that at the end of this run, my watch will tell me that I am unproductive or detraining or something. Uh, it's not gonna say, a boy, Dan, look at you getting all fit. It's gonna say, say something else. And the reason for that is that I've just realized it's a new-ish watch and I haven't reset my heart rate zones on it. And so it's using a normal heart rate zone just from its its watch uh, algorithm to figure out what my zones should be. I haven't plugged in what I know my zones to be. And so when I get to the trail, I'm gonna take this camera back out and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about heart rate zones and your watch and why they matter. Hey everybody, Coach Dan here, back on the trail to talk to you about heart rate zones. Look, we do a lot of talking about heart rate zones here on this channel. We'll link to a video about it at the end of this one. I also like to help you get the most out of your fancy running watch, but Coach Aaron here at The Run Experience pointed out to me last week that I've never really done a video that puts those two things together, your heart rate zones and your fancy running watch. That combined with the fact that my watch has been giving me the unproductive note after a lot of my runs recently, got me thinking about why that is the case. And the case for me is that, well, a bunch of things. It's autumn here in Newfoundland and Labrador, which is to say it's really cold and really wet and getting really colder and really wetter. Uh, and so sometimes that can mess with your heart rate while you're running because you need a little extra work to stay warm. But in my case, it's also because I have a new watch. Yes, even the toughest kit in the world cannot withstand my rough and rowdy weights. And as a result, I've had to get a replacement watch. Now, <clears throat> what that meant is my heart rate zones that I had programmed into my last watch didn't carry over to this new watch. So I had to change them and it got me thinking, well, I've never told people how to do that or why they should. So that's what we're talking about today. Now, heart rate zones, there's normally five of them when we talk about them here at The Run Experience, one being the easiest, five being the toughest. And again, we've got lots of videos that break this down in much more detail. Your watch uses a, a sort of formula or a combination of formula that is based on your age. Now, the one most of us know is called the Fox formula, which is 220 minus your age. Now, that's as likely to be wrong as it is to be right, and that's the truth of the matter on that one. That tends to be pretty good if you're young, and relatively fit, but when you become old like me, over 40, ugh, and you are sort of on the higher end of the fitness scale, I tend to run a lot and I take training pretty seriously, that 220 minus my age really doesn't help me out that much. So what that would tell me is that my max heart rate is 178 beats per minute. Now, gosh, that sounds fine. And listen, there's no judgment of what your maximum heart rate is, like who cares? They said that that one happens to not be true for me. So how do we figure out what our max heart rate is? Well, the best way to figure out what your maximum heart rate is is to find a scientist with a white, nice white lab coat and a clipboard, ideally, who's got a treadmill and a thing to hook up to your face. And no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do a stress test. There's a video on here about lactate threshold. We're gonna calculate our lactate threshold or our maximum heart rate specifically in this example by doing a stress test. What does it mean? Well, there's a bunch of ways to do it. The Joe Friels blog, which will be linked to the bottom here, tells you about a 30 minute stress test you can do that'll come up with your maximum heart rate. That's a really good one, but there are other ways to do it. Chances are you already know your maximum heart rate. Why? Well, cause you're a runner, you've been running and you've got Strava, you've got Garmin Connect or Koros or whatever watch you're using has already been collecting data for you. So go on back to your last super hard effort. For me, I ran a couple of road races. And so I looked back at what my maximum heart rate was during those efforts to see, hey, is it 178? Like the Fox formula of 220 minus my age would tell me this. No, it's not even close. My max heart rate on a 16 kilometer road race was 199. Huh. Now, maybe that's a bit of an outlier. Around that same period, I did a 20 kilometer road race as well, a really hilly one called the Cape to Cabot. What was my maximum heart rate during that race? 199 as well. So I can be pretty confident that my max heart rate while running at a hard effort is 199 beats per minute. Again, no judgment about what yours is. That just happens to be what my mine is as a 42 year old. Now, how did Strava come up with those numbers? Well, in my case, it just used my watch, an optimal heart rate sensor on my watch. What that does is it zaps an LED downward from the back of my watch toward my skin, and it can measure things based on that light that gets passed through my blood. Basically tries to just take my pulse as it does that. 
Now, that works for lots of us. It doesn't work for everybody. So keep that in mind that if you've got a tattoo on your wrist or if you've got a different type of skin pigment than I do or than the watch was configured for, sometimes that data is not gonna be right. The best way, the gold standard for those of us who train pretty hard is to use a chest strap. That actually is like a mini EKG. It, it uses an electrical impulse that right against your skin to try to measure your heart rate. And it is more accurate than your watch. So you can hook that chest strap up directly to your watch so you still get that info in real time on your watch, even if you're not using the optical heart rate monitor from your watch. Now, once you've got that max heart rate number, in my case, 199, what do you do with it? Well, I put a link in the bottom to, to your Garmin Connect. There'll be another one down there for your Coros app to show you what to do. Basically, you just go into your Garmin Connect or your Coros settings and plug in that max heart rate number. And then your fields, your heart rate zones, those fields will automatically fill in to, as a percentage of that maximum heart rate. Now, if you want to get even more specific, which I would recommend, if you're wearing this fancy watch anyway, it's going to tell you what your heart rate is in the morning. Use that as your heart resting heart rate. When you first wake up, before your cup of coffee, before you do too much, just take a look at what your resting heart rate is and plug that in as well. It'll just give you an extra degree of accuracy to get those heart rate zones. This does a whole bunch of things. Look, as we talk about training using heart rate, we want to make sure we're getting lots of miles in at those easy zones and we want to make sure our hard work is hard enough when we stay out of that weird gray zone in the middle. That gray zone in the middle tends to be kind of a waste of your training time. Frankly, you're not going to see the best adaptation or the best results as you can if you're in that gray zone compared to if you're doing the right amount of work in the easy zone and the right amount of work in the harder zones. So make sure you're doing it right. So you got your max heart rate, you've plugged it in, the zones have auto-filled, they've populated to your watch the next time you sync. All of that is great. The next thing I wanna tell you about this though, is to not get too wrapped up in your watch telling you that you've been unproductive or that you're detraining. The truth of the matter is that you know better than your watch does how you're feeling. If you're doing the work properly and you're gaining fitness, you'll know that, you'll feel it in your body, you'll see it in your paces and in your heart rates. You don't need your watch to tell you after every single run if you're being unproductive or not. Feel free to go right ahead and turn that feature off. I've never found it to be especially helpful, especially when it just tells me I'm maintaining, 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 maintaining. Now, the only other thing I would say is that if you're not following a running plan, if you don't have a ton of great coaches around in your life, or if you're not certain that your training is, has been really consistent, or if you're not certain your training has been really effective, maybe that is a good way to go. Maybe having that turned on. And if you see a trend, and so it's telling you you're unproductive all the time, maybe it is something to keep in mind. Look, we've got these fancy tools on our wrists all the time. We've got this amazing science around heart rate zones and how to train properly, but those things only matter if you use them. So get it right, get your maximum heart rate, plug it in and use it.